Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to our Tuesday night Bible class, the best 30 minutes you're going to spend all week. Um, give everybody just a little bit of time to get signed in and um, share the broadcast as you come online with us. And as you do come online with us, remember to let us know where you're listening to us from. And um, I, I'm excited about what God is doing. We're, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. We're moving to our new location in Covington. If you go to our website, go to our Facebook page. We'll, beginning on October 29th, we'll be meeting at the Clarion Hotel on Highway 190 in Covington, Louisiana. Amen. Those of you who are on the South Shore, it's a straight shot across the causeway. You can be there in you can be there in 20 minutes. And also note that we have a new time. The new service time is now 11 a.m. We'll be meeting at our Hammond location for the last time this Sunday, and we will meet at 11 a.m. So we invite you out to 2126 Skinner Drive, Hammond, Louisiana, for um. Sunday service at 11 a.m., dynamic praise and worship. The presence of God has been filling the house, amen. I mean, it's to the point where all, all the, all, you just have to show up and God is doing some things. God is, doing, is just moving in an awesome way. He's touching people during the praise and worship in a powerful way. People getting saved, getting healed, getting delivered. In the midst of praise and worship, not even having anybody lay hands on them, not doing anything, but God is just doing a great work, and it's not it's not us, it's not us, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. All we do is get out the way and allow God to do what He does best, and that is minister to people and set people free. Amen. So, as you're joining tonight, let us know where you're from, and make sure you share this broadcast on your timeline. We want to also invite you to our Bible class tomorrow night, our foundation class tomorrow night. We meet at Lilia Boggs' house in Mandeville, 2058 Dupree Street, I believe it is, in Mandeville. We meet, for, we, we meet at 7 p.m., and by 8.01 p.m., you will be walking out the door. Amen. I believe uh, Apostle Barber is going to be ministering tomorrow night on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Last week, we covered water baptism. And we cleared up some misconceptions about that, and we touched on that and ministered along those lines. And Amen. God is just doing a great thing. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of John, the gospel of John. And we're going to read a little bit of scripture tonight, because I'm going to read this ver the first 11 verses of the gospel of John, chapter 15, out of the, amp out of the King James but I want to read it out of the Amplified. Amen. I want to read it out of the Amplified, the Amplified Classic Edition, because it brings that it brings out some points that I believe God would want us to hear. How many of y'all know that God is doing a shift in the midst of His church, in the midst of His body? God is doing something in the midst of His church, and many of us are in danger of missing what God is doing because we don't understand. See, we, 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 we don't understand the character of God many times. We don't understand how, why God does things and how he does things. And one of the things that we need to understand is that in the midst of God shifting you into a new season, in the midst of him doing something new in your life and using you in a new way, using you under a new anointing, using you in a new place, using you in a new ministry even, you need to understand that you can't bring into your new season many of the things that you used in your old season. Can I get an amen? Okay? And so we miss part of the process of God. We See, we need to understand something. We need to build upon, let me say this clearly, we need to build upon what God has already done. Okay? We build upon what he has done in our lives, but we don't camp at that location. It becomes a part of the foundation of what we did, okay? You see, when, 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 when the children of Israel, watch this, when they crossed from, when, when they crossed into the promised land, the Joshua had them do something. What did they do? They put 12 stones in the 
in, in the riverbed that they crossed. They put 12 stones there. Why is that? It was a, the Bible, the scripture says that they were stones of memorial. They were stones of memorial. In other words, you need to remember how God moved here at this time, how he parted the water. But you also need to understand that he's not going to do that again. That's just a foundation for what he's going to do in the new land that he's brought you to. Amen? The scripture tells us that we don't remove the ancient landmarks. We remember what God did yesterday, but we understand that he's doing something new today. Okay? Thank God for the charismatic renewal. Thank God for the time of the word of faith being taught. Thank God for the emergence of the teachers and the restoration of the office of the teacher and the office of the pastor and the office of the evangelist. But how many of y'all know that now God is doing something new? He's restoring the, the government of the kingdom to his church, and we're, we're walking into what God has called us to walk into. Amen? He's, he's doing something new, and while we, we're excited about what he's done in the past, and we, we relish what he's done in the past, we're not camped in that old location we're taking what we've learned from that old location and we're moving it over into what he's doing now. That's why Joel said that your old men shall dream dreams, but your young men would have visions. In other words, we relish what the teachers of old, I relish what Kenneth Hagin has taught, I relish what Kenneth Copeland and Oral Roberts and all these great leaders have taught, but how many of y'all know, okay, they had dreams but we are having visions of what their dreams were. In other words, we're, we're, we're fulfilling what their dream was and we're bringing the, their foundation into something new. Amen? And that's kind of what I want to minister on tonight. I want to be careful with this because I believe God... I don't want to spend... Several, I don't believe God would have me spend several weeks building this, but he, I, I believe that He would have me to take this tonight and... Somebody needs to hear this tonight because you're struggling with the shift. You're struggling with what God wants to do in your life. Okay, and you're struggling about how God is moving. And I believe that if you, if you grasp the concept that I'm going to teach you in the next 15 minutes, that God's going to greatly accelerate what he's doing in your life. And you're going to see that you're going to be moved from point A to point B rapidly. Amen. So John chapter 15 and I'm going to first read it out of the King James, the first 11 verses. And the scripture says this. It says, I am the true vine. Okay, we're not going to talk about this tonight, but if there's a true vine, that means there's also a what? A false vine. So we don't want to be connected to the false vine. We want to be connected to the true vine. I am the true vine, Jesus said, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges, or the original Greek says he cleanses it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3 is important, okay? Now you are clean or purged through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides when in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words... Abide in you. Remember what I said about verse 3. You are, now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you or preached unto you, decreed unto you, declared unto you. Okay? If you abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you, ye, in my love. If you keep my commandments, then you shall, and you, you shall abide in my love. In other words, another thing we can say, if you keep my words, 
You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's words or commandments, and abide in his love. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now let me read that to you out of the Amplified Classic Version. And it says this. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. You are cleansed and pruned already because of the word word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whosoever lives in me and I in him bears much more abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from the vital union with me, you can do nothing. If a man does not, if a person does not dwell in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and, he, and, and withers, and such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. If you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and you continue to live in your hearts, and ask whatever you will, it shall be done unto you. When you, bear, when you bear or produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you do show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Abide in my love. Continue in his love with me. Notice that. Continue in his love with me. It's important that we stay connected, okay? If you keep my commandments, if you continue to obey my instructions, you will abide in my love and live on in it, just as I have obeyed my Father's love, commandments or words and live, on, and live on in His love. I have told you these things that my joy and my delight may be in you, and that your joy and gladness may be of the full measure and complete and overflowing. Amen. Okay, let's talk about this, okay? I'm going to put this over here on the side. I need a bigger pulpit, guys, okay? I'm just going to tell you. I'm running out of room here, okay? First thing we need to understand is that Jesus is the vine. The the very first thing Jesus says is, he says, I am the true vine. The original Greek says, I am the authentic. I am the genuine, okay? I'm the one. There's no one like me. There's nothing else like me. I'm not a copy. I'm not a replica. I am the real deal is what we would say today, okay? I'm the real deal. I'm the authentic one. He says, and and so if there's a real deal, if there's an authentic one, like I said earlier, then that means there can be a false one, amen? And you know, we we plug ourselves into false vines all the time. What, 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 What could be a false vine, Brother Mitchell? A false vine could be your church. A false vine could be someone that, that, that you admire their teaching and you never go back and verify whether or not what they're saying is actually in the Bible, okay? A false vine could be a particular philosophy you have about life. A false vine could be this Babylonian system that we get hung up in. Oh, there I go. I've already attacked the Babylonian system. I've only, I haven't been preaching 10 minutes. Okay, but you see, so many times we get hung up and we, we, we get so busy doing life that we begin to do life the way the world does life. And we're not really doing life at that part, at that point. We end up, we're actually doing death because we're partaking and we're doing things that the way the world does and we're doing things the way that this Babylonian system does and we put the word in the background, we put the word back behind us and then we wonder why we go off into different tangents and go off into different goofy stuff, okay? It's why, it, the reason for that is, is because we have negated the word of God in our life and we have stepped out of the kingdom of light and we began to operate un, under the kingdom of darkness. Understand this tonight, that when you begin to do things the way the world does, you're no longer operating in your element. 
you have crossed over and you've went to the you you you've went you've went to in, in, into the enemy's lair, into the enemy's territory, into the enemy's yard, and you that's where you're going to end up getting beat. And you're going to get beat up. Amen? Yeah, my daddy used to tell me, whenever you get in a fight with somebody, I didn't, I, I, no, no, okay, this is, this is Jason B.C. This is Jason back when he was a kid. Okay? If you're going to fight somebody, you never fight them in their yard. You fight them on your territory, on your terms, because you're the one who knows where every stick is, every rock is, and everything, every weapon in the yard is, you know where it is because it's your Yard. Can I tell you something tonight? That if you begin to fight in Babylon and you begin to fight the way Babylon fights, you're going to be fighting in the devil's territory. The Bible tells us what? That the weapons of our warfare, okay? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, I, I've, got, I've got different weapons, okay? I've got better weapons than what the world has. I've got a better way of doing things than what the world does. I've got a better way of operating and handling my affairs than handling them like the way Babylon handles them. Amen? See, I... I, I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Okay, see, we, we, need, to, we, we need, need to lose the idea of a democracy in the way that this country is ran. We need to understand that we are part of the kingdom of God. You see, heaven's a place. Heaven's a planet. Okay? And there's a king there, and his name is Jehovah. Okay, and one day Jehovah sent his son named Yeshua, named Jesus. He sent him here and he is, began to establish his kingdom in the earth and he began to teach his disciples, the ones who followed him, to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is already done in heaven. In other words, we're ambassadors here in this life. Amen? So, he says in verse 1 that I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Okay? Now notice this. And I, look, I looked this up this morning because I, I really got excited about this. I said I wanted to teach on the authority of the name of Jesus. Okay? One of our great spiritual weapons. But the Holy Spirit checked me this morning and he says, no, people need to understand the shift that the body of Christ is going through right now. And we need to understand why what's happening in our lives is happening in our lives. And so he began to speak to me about pruning. OK, he began to speak to me about purging. Verse two says every branch that is in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, don't put that into a negative context. I'm going to explain this, okay? Watch this, okay? Pruning, write this down. Pruning is a seasonal occurrence. If you have grapevines, if you have apple, if you have any fruit-bearing plant, okay, once a year, that plant, that tree has to be Pruned. Why is that? Okay. Giving the exa example of the grapevine. Okay. Okay. The th what happens is is that grapes are only produced on first year wood from the vine. Let me say that again. Okay. Grapes are only produced. The, from the first, what they call the first year wood of the vine. In other words, if you've got a, if, if if you've got a branch that has grown out of the vine, okay, the first year it grows out, it's going to produce grapes. Guess what? The second year, it's not going to produce anything. Okay, it's no longer good. Okay, so what happens? You need to picture this, okay, at the bottom of that, uh, at the bottom of that branch that is attached to the vine, you'll begin to see buds to come out of it, okay? And so what you do is, that's new growth coming out of where that old vine used to be. So the father comes, the vine dresser comes, and he trims, he prunes, he cuts off 
the old stuff and only leaves the new stuff. Oh, can you see a picture here now? Okay, he cuts off the old stuff and he only need, leaves the new stuff. Now, he doesn't do that except at a particular time of the year. Okay, God will bring you through a season where he's going to prune you. He's going to purge you. He's going to clean you. Okay, and what happens? Okay, that season comes and what happens? You're reading the Bible one day. You're reading the Word one day. Because look what he says in verse 2. Okay, I'm sorry, verse 3. He says what? You are clean. You are purged. You are pruned through the Word which I have spoken to you. Okay, we remember the difference between Logos, the general Word of God. We've got 66 books of it. And the Rhema or the speaking Word of God. So what happens is... You're going along one day and you're reading your Logos. You're reading your general words. You're reading your Bible. Okay? And guess what happens? One day you're going along and you're reading, oh, let's see. If a man loves me, he will keep my words. John 14, 23. He will keep my words and my Father will love him and we will come unto him and we will make our abode with him. You may have read that three or four times, but all of a sudden one day you're reading that verse of Scripture and you read that and bells and whistles go off in your head. Bells and whistles, that word just explodes in you. That word has now become rhema to you because now it has quickened your spirit and something happens. You realize, wow, wherever I go, God is in me and he goes with me. Where if I go to the store, God's with me. If I go to work, God is with me. If I go to school, God is with me. If I go to do something I'm not supposed to do, God is with me. All of a sudden, you begin to get a God consciousness. What has happened? That word has become alive to you, and it begins to purge you. you begin, it begins to prune you. All of a sudden, you realize, you know what? God lives in me. I can't do some of these things I used to do. I don't have the right to lose my temper anymore. I don't have the right to have road rage and flip my finger at the guy who just cut me off in traffic. Oh, watch out. Now I'm meddling. Yes, I am. Because you see, the Word of God comes and meddles with you. I don't have the right to look at that female or that male or that other person and think the way I used to think. Why? Because God lives in me. Okay? He has came and made His abode in me. Okay? In other words, what has happened is the Word of God has come and it's began to purge me. You may be going along one day and all of, you, all of a sudden you read this verse of Scripture with the Scripture that says, you know, without faith it is impossible to please God. And all of a sudden you begin to think about the way you used to do things on your own mind, your own conniving, your own scheming. And all of a sudden you realize, you know what? I can't live that way anymore. I've got to learn to live by faith and learn how to trust God for what He wants to do in my life. What has happened? John chapter 15 verse 3 is came. He has spoken His word to you and that word has gotten your attention and it begins to cleanse you. Can I tell you something tonight? You want to move, if you want to move into the shift that God, to the place that God wants to move you to, to do a new thing in you, you're number one, you're going to need to become a word person and you're going to need to allow that word to change you. You're going to need to allow that word to come in and touch the areas you don't want touched. Okay? He's going to have to come and you're going to have to allow him to touch the areas you do not want touched so that you can move up and move forward with him. Remember what we've been teaching. Okay, the Bible tells us that the word of the Lord, the name of the Lord, I'm sorry, is a strong tower, and the righteous, those who are in right standing with him, do what? Run up into it and are safe. Amen? Let's go a little bit further. So pruning is a seasonal thing. We understand the word prunes us. We understand that it's only done at certain times during the year. It's done at a time when it seems like things are dormant, that things aren't happening. Okay? 
And it's done for a specific person, a specific purpose. It's done to remove things out of your life. It may be done to remove people out of your life. It may be done to remove habits out of your life. And watch this. It may be done to move certain anointings out of your life because he wants to cause a greater increase because what happens after the pruning, after the pruning, guess what happens? You've been pruned and the, and the Bible says once you've been pruned, you bear more fruit. Now, I'll tell you something that I saw was interesting and this is Lanyap for you. I was reading about this and I was studying some stuff on, 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 on the internet about pruning this morning. Okay, and when they come in and they come to they come in to prune a um I I can't remember what it's called, but a field of grapevines. Okay, whatever it's called, whatever it would be called, they would come in. They'll come in and they will prune, like I said, down to the, down down to the new wood, and then what they do is they instruct the ones who are dressing the vines, the ones who are doing the pruning to take and put their hand, watch this, here, like here's the vine, to take and put their hand on the vine, okay? And what they'll do is they only want to keep the bud on either side of the hand. Anything that the hand covers is cut away. In other words, there's a hand space between each bud, between each new piece of new growth. Oh, can I get? Can, can can you see an analogy here? Where what what's a comparison of the hand in Scripture? Come on, somebody answer me on the internet. What's a comparison of the hand in Scripture? Okay, come on, come on, somebody, come, somebody got to get this. Somebody got to get this. Watch this, teacher, pastor, evangelist prophet, apostle. The hand of God is the fivefold ministry. God uses the hand of God to proclaim the word which causes the pruning to occur on the vine. Come on, guys. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see it? Okay? So you see, those of you who call yourselves leaders, those of you who have been called, those of you who have been called to the fivefold ministry, you need to realize the awesome responsibility God has given you. You need to understand the awesome responsibility that He has placed in you. Okay? You have to rightly discern the word that God has dropped in your spirit and the word that God is giving you to preach. I always tell people, stay in your lane, okay? I don't go off and preach on certain things. You will hardly ever hear me teach a message on the book of Revelation. Why? That is not my lane, okay? I'm, there are other people who that is their lane. That's where they need to go. But if you want to hear a message about, about, the, about how to live this life, if you want to hear a message about faith, if you want to... If, it, it, Okay, I've got stuff that God, I know my lane, I know my position, I know my place. Okay, I know my place. I know what God has called me to do. Okay, I've spent time with him, I've allowed him to speak to me. I've had other people come and confirm to me what my calling is. I, I, I don't get moved by men, I don't get moved by what people tell me. But I know that I know that I know what God has called me to do. And nobody can persuade that. Nobody can sway me from that. Okay? So, we need to understand, and I hope you're writing this down. Number one, pruning is a seasonal thing. Okay? We need to understand the Word is what prunes us. We also need to understand that it's done only at certain times. It's done for a specific purpose. And watch this. Fruit only grows on new Growth. It only grows on first year growth. What's that a picture of? Okay, that's a picture of you can't bring into your new season the things you used to do in your old season. Okay, turn with me real quick to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 33. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 33. 
and we're not, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this point, but you need to see this. And we've taught on this before. We've got, in fact, we've got a whole series on it. Um, if you're interested in it, send us, send us any information, and we will gladly get it, put it together for you for, and and for and, and for a gift, we we will get this out to you. But Luke chapter five, verse thirty-three. Watch this. Luke chapter five, and let's begin. I'm sorry. Let, let let's begin at verse thirty-seven. Luke chapter five, verse thirty-seven. And the word of the Lord says this. And no man puts new wine into old bottles, into old wine skins, okay? Or else the new wine will burst the old, will burst the bottles, and they will be spilled, and the bottles will perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Look at verse 38. I want you to do something, okay? Underline the word new wine, and then come back and underline new bottles. That word new, those two words new, are actually two different words in the Greek. Watch this. There are two different words in the Greek. Because you see, I don't want the enemy to come in and the enemy tell you, well, you know, I was in the last move of God, or, you know, I, 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 I've, it, whatever I used to do in God is over with now. I guess God's just done with me. I, I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. Your best days are ahead of you. God's not finished with any of us if we will allow him to move in our lives and we will keep our eyes fresh upon him. Amen? Okay, that word new, that first word new, the new wine must be put, okay, that is talking about something that's brand new. It's talking about new wine, just freshly made. But when we go into the Greek and we look at the second word, put into new bottles, that word is actually the word renewed bottles. Oh, ho, ho, ho. renewed bottles. See, let, let, let me, you need to understand the customs here. Okay, these bottles were most, most often made out of sheepskin. They were made out of skin, animal skins, out of sheepskin, okay? Those of us who used to be in the world, you, you went, you've seen the people on Mardi Gras Day. They got, they, 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 they got the leather pouch with, the, with, with, with whatever they, they're, they're drinking in it. You've seen it. Well, it's the same thing, okay? What would happen in, in the biblical days, okay, is that I would go ahead and I would use my wine skin that, that, that I used... For, for 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 wine or whatever, and when I finished drinking everything out of that skin, I would take that scent that skin, and I would discard it. I would place it on the side, okay. Until it was time to get more provision, more wine. Then what I would do before I went and got the new wine. Watch this. This is a, this is beautiful because this is what God does to us. I would take that wine skin and I would place it in water. And I would be you see that wine skin now is all shriveled and 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 dried up. It's not good for anything. So if I do pour liquid into it, what's going to happen? It's going to burst. Okay? Now watch this. So I take that old wine skin and I put it in some water and I let it soak and I let that skin absorb the water. Okay? And then I take that skin, and I over, over a period of maybe two, three, four days, I begin to rub oil into it, olive oil. I begin to massage it. I begin to make it pliable again. What am I doing? I am renewing that skin. Can I tell you something? That the Holy Spirit, God the Father, Yeshua, Jesus, will come if you will allow Him, and He'll take your old dried up thoughts He'll take your old dried up attitude. He'll take your old dried up way of doing things. And if you will allow him, he will begin to pour the water of the washing of the word into your life. And you'll begin to absorb it and you'll begin to take it in. And you'll begin to get new revelation. And then he'll come with the Holy Ghost, the oil of the Holy Ghost. And he'll begin to massage you with that. And he'll begin to love on you. And he'll make you pliable. He'll make you what that word supple is. S-U-P-P-L-E. And he'll make you flexible again. And then guess what he can do? 
He will come on now. He can take that new wine and he can pour it into that renewed wine skin because you have walked away from your old way of doing things and you can move on into this fresh new move of God because what did you do? You didn't run away during the process. You stayed connected to the vine. Can I get it? Amen. Come on, shout. Somebody need to shout. I wish y'all could shout on the internet. I don't know how to do that. We'll have to figure that out. Okay? But the key is this, guys. The key is this. The key is staying connected to the vine. Don't run, don't break off from the vine when you don't like the process. Don't break off from the vine when things don't seem to be going the way it's going. Don't break off from the vine when when, when, when things are going cuckoo and crazy in your life, stay connected. See, when the trouble comes, is not the time to run. That's the time that you need to come in and you need to grab hold to the vine, the, the Word of God, and stay connected. Amen? Praise the Lord. You need to stay connected. You can't run. The one thing, and I shared this last Wednesday night, and, and, and I'm closing. I shared this last Wednesday night in our Bible class, in our foundation class at, at, at Evangelist Boggs' house. Okay? At, at, about how one time when, when, when I, I backslid. I backslid early in my ministry. I walked away. And I got disgusted and everything else. And, and, and I, I explained, ultimately it was my fault. I'm the one who did it. Okay? Ultimately it was my fault. But what I did was, okay, I, I, I got into a situation. And, this, and long story short is that I, allow, I allowed the enemy to come in and cut me off from, 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 from the, the rest of the herd. Okay, see, because I knew too much for the Baptists to talk to me, and the Pentecostals had 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 put my business out on the street. Okay, so what what happened? He successfully isolated me from anyone that I would go talk to. He isolated me, and so therefore, what happens when you get isolated? That's what that's what a wolf does. A wolf will find the weakest per, the weakest sheep in the in the flock, and what does he do? He isolates that sheep away from the rest of the flock, and then they destroy and they kill that sheep. And that's what the enemy does, guys. The enemy comes in and he will try to isolate you. You'll stop going to church because that's nothing but hypocrites over there. You'll stop going to church because all that preacher does is holler, spit, and scream. You'll stop going to church because every time he preaches, what happens? It just gets me upset. I don't like what he has to say. Okay? And so what happens is you eventually, you, you, and, and, so, and, and you'll go to another church, and you'll be happy for about three, four, five months, and then what's going to happen is the same problems you had over there, you're going to have over here. Well, let me tell you why that's happening. It's because you showed up there. Okay, come on, preach with me now. You showed up there, okay, and all you did was you brought your problems that you had. And I'm not saying that there there aren't some issues, okay. I'm not saying that, okay. There are bad apples. There are problems. There are issues that maybe you do need to get away from, okay. But what but what happens is is that the enemy plays that and he takes and he cuts you off. And you become isolated, and once you're isolated from the rest of the body, from the rest of the flock, then he can destroy you. Amen? But I am so happy that we serve a God who redeems. I am so happy that we serve a God who renews. I am so happy that we serve a God who forgives. And he doesn't, he, he, does, he looks beyond, as the song says, he looks beyond our faults. And he sees our need. And that need is what? That we need to be in fellowship with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope this has been a blessing for you tonight. I want to challenge you. Go back and read John 15. And understand that you need to be connected to the vine. Even during the purging and the pruning process. Stay connected. 
He's not, he's not destroying you. All He's doing is removing the old stuff from you through the washing of the water of the Word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm closing my Bible. I'm turning off my iPad. But before I go, I want to let you know, you feel free to come join us at 2056 Dupree Street tomorrow night in Mandeville. Okay, for our foundation class. And again, this Sunday at 11 a.m. is our last time meeting at 2126 Skinner Drive in Hammond. We're moving to the Clarion Hotel in Covington, Louisiana. Those of you who are able, it's a straight drive across the causeway. We want to, we want to invite you to be there for our launch on, August, on October 29th. Okay? If you can't be there in person, make sure you join us via live stream. Okay? And I want you to, I want to challenge you also to join us in giving as we move to this new location. This is a step of faith for us. Okay? It, it's going it, it's to call it. It's going to. We need to bring in a minimum of two hundred dollars a week in order to sustain this move. Okay, and I'm 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 just going to flat out tell you. Okay, we need to bring that. That's what needs to come in on a weekly basis. Is going to be two hundred dollars to sustain this move. Okay, now we're believing God that He's going to do some great and mighty things. I mean, if you were there for our conference, if you've been there in any of our services, God is doing some awesome stuff. Amen. We were in service this Sunday morning. Okay, praise and worship began. Uh, you know, we, we haven't been televising our praise and worship because of time constraints and stuff. But as the presence of God entered the room, okay, we watched a girl. A, a lady who was there, she's been through a whole lot of stuff, and we just watched God melt her. She walked in and couldn't even stand in the presence of God. She just began to weep, and she began to cry. And then Catherine came forth, and she began to minister the word of the Lord to her. And she and, and, and this completely, totally set her free. Okay, that's what makes it worth this. Amen? So, we just want to challenge you. October 29th will be our first service at the Clarion Hotel. So we, we, we want you all to join. And also, if you go to our website, Apostle Barbara will be ministering this Friday night in Slidell. Okay, in, in Slidell. And, and so go and support her. It's going to be, a, I believe it's a women's meeting. But go and support her. She's going, it's going to be a blessing. Amen. We appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you go to our website. Send us your prayer requests. Hit the giving tab. Send an offering to this ministry. God will bless you financially. Okay, if you're interested in any of our tape series, contact us and we'll let you know. We've got a wonderful tape series on the prodigal son that I believe is $18. Okay, if you're still thinking of yourself as the prodigal son, you need that tape series. You need that CD series because you need to understand that you don't stand in the position of the prodigal once you've been redeemed. You stand in the position of the Father as a minister of reconciliation. Amen. We love you guys. We're praying for you. Pray for us. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.